Final ending of the glare, part one down below. It was a gorgeous spring day on Sere, and we had just wrapped up Sarah and Becky's first birthday celebration. Sarah and Becky, according to my family and friends, have blonde hair and green eyes just like myself. My parents are staying with us for the next two weeks after flying up for the girl's birthday. It was good to see them once more. They were here for the trial the previous time they were here. My parents had to show everyone the photos of me when I was a year old to establish that the girls resembled me. I believed my mother recognized the question was not whether I was the girl's biological mother but rather whether Tommy or Larry was her real father. In any case, I adore my mother. My mother had to share anecdotes as well. Ronald, that's my dad, mom calls him Ronald, everyone else calls him Ron or Ronnie. Lisa was a perfect daughter and would go right to sleep while Karen was always so fussy. She would cry so much that Ronald had to wear earplugs so that he could sleep at night. After a tiring day for the girls, my mother and I put Sarah and Becky to bed. While Dad was assisting with the assembly of the girls' dollhouse, Mom and I sat up and spoke for a bit, enjoying coffee and cake. Mom wanted to make sure I was coping with being the sole caregiver for two daughters. It was about 10 in the evening when Mom went to bed. I entered to give the females one more look. They were completely unaware of the last two years of my life and were quite tranquil. However, I'm content with my girls and don't really wish that things had worked out differently. It seems like it happened yesterday. I didn't want to be here by myself, so I asked, is your husband on his way? All I needed was a companion to sit with. My spouse, who may or may not be my baby's father, refuses to interact with me until he learns for sure if he is their father. Furthermore, my parents, who reside in Florida, were scheduled to arrive next week, and my sister and her husband decided not to postpone their trip to Jamaica because I was not expected to give birth for another two weeks. I tried to talk to my 24-year-old sister-in-law over the phone. I was unable to comprehend a single thing she said. She seemed like she was almost halfway in the bag, so I'm assuming she was out at a pub. To go to the hospital, I had to dial for help. So, I'm by myself here. The conclusion of the 12-hour labor couldn't have come soon enough, as Nurse Dottie, who is now a good friend, stayed by my side, holding my hand and pushing me to persevere. Give it all you got, honey, it'll be worth it in the end and then you can sleep, she said. I was so tired after the babies were delivered that all I wanted to do was go to bed. After taking my phone, Dottie asked me who I wanted to inform about the baby's arrival. After giving it some thought, I made the decision to inform my parents, Sister Lisa and her husband, and Sister-in-law Tina. They were the ones who had supported me for the previous nine months. Dottie acted in this manner. This is Nurse Dottie, and I am proud to tell you that Karen is doing fine and so are her two beautiful daughters Sarah and Becky. She's very tired and you would be too if you were in labor for 12 hours, so please hold your calls until tomorrow. A photo of me lying in bed with the girls was attached by her. After then, I dozed off completely. After three days in the hospital, I was allowed to go home and take care of the girls by myself. It was going to be another week before my sister Lisa and her husband Jerry returned from their holiday in Jamaica. Lisa requested to return early, but I advised her to savor her time with Jerry. While they were away, their kids were in the care of Jerry's parents. Lisa and Jerry really needed some time alone, those two kids are a handful. My parents were scheduled, but they wouldn't be able to arrive until the following weekend. Dottie, my new buddy, vowed that she would support me until my parents got here. Although I wasn't quite convinced, Dottie persisted, and I was in dire need of assistance. Until Tommy saw the results of the DNA test, he would not speak to me. I took Dottie up on her offer. That's how I got to be so good friends with Dottie, her husband Robbie, their daughter Tanya, Mandy, and Sherry. Tanya was a gift from God. She attends the nearby college as a sophomore and resides at home. Tanya stayed at my sister's house with me when my parents were there. Tanya was always there for me when I needed assistance or just a night out when I moved into my own apartment. She enjoyed observing the females. Mandy and Sherry, Dottie's two oldest daughters, are also local residents and married. Roger, Dottie's younger brother, is another. He practices physical therapy. Tanya works part-time for Roger and is enrolled in school to become a physician assistant. That's when she's not assisting me or attending school. They've all grown to be like family to me, and today we celebrated Sarah and Becky's first birthdays together. You never really understand how hard it is until you have your own children, especially if you have twins. I wouldn't trade it for anything, so I'm not whining. Tommy was chatting to me at least, even though I hadn't returned with him yet. He came, after all, just to view the females. He persisted in advocating for the DNA test. To be honest, though, I stopped caring who the father was because it wouldn't affect the result. Larry was very explicit in saying that, even though Sarah and Becky were his children, he did not want anything to do with them. I was thinking Tommy would just take me back and accept the girls because they looked like me and no one would ever find out who the girl's father was. Without the DNA test, though, he wouldn't. I recently purchased a townhouse with three bedrooms and a tiny backyard. It did, and it was spacious enough to host guests. Tommy didn't want to become very involved with the girls, although he did come visit sometimes. It was more like to a friend dropping over to wish you well. Ever though I knew the females were his, I still didn't know if he would ever accept me back. 
The girl's last name is currently Downey, which is also my maiden name. I wasn't worried about finding a job for a long because I still had a lot of money from my WDB severance agreement, or rather, my hush money. In theory, if I needed the money, I still had Tommy's savings, of which half was mine. However, I was unwilling to touch it. Transferring the funds to another checking account would make me feel as though I was given up. I knew I wanted to try and move on from Tommy, even though I still missed him. According to Jonathan, I was left alone by the FBI for three months while they collected evidence to file charges against Larry Wilson, Brian Donnelly, and Keith Brown of WDB and Associates, my previous employment. Thank God, I was spared from editing. Nonetheless, I was subpoenaed to testify as a witness for the United States government. Since Jonathan informed them that I wouldn't communicate with them until they arrested me, I never spoke with the prosecutor. I only had to show up in my testimony. What a disaster that proved to be. I won order in my court. One more outburst and I will hold you in contempt, Mr. Campbell. Jonathan was unyielding and disapproved of everything U.S. Attorney Williams, the prosecutor, said. Furthermore, Jonathan managed to persuade Keith, Brian Donnelly, and Larry Wilson to allow him to act as their legal representative. Your Honor, please don't belittle me. I have a law degree from Harvard, and I have proven myself in a court of law many times. I have also stood before you many times and argued cases against the district attorney, so please show me the respect that I deserve. Okay, Mr. Campbell, what are you objecting to know? Mr. Williams is leading his client. Mrs. Campbell already said that the severance pay was for her years of service. It was not a bribe as the prosecutor is leading Mrs. Campbell to admit to. Mr. Williams, can you rephrase your question? Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Campbell, will you please tell the court why WDB allowed you to receive your remaining salary for the year plus bonus and two more years salary plus bonus? Also, WDB and Associates provided your health insurance coverage until I found a new job. I object. To what no Mr. Campbell. Now the prosecutor thinks Mrs. Campbell is a mind reader. Mr. Williams please rephrase the question. Mrs. Campbell, will you please tell the court why you think WDB allowed you to receive your remaining salary for the year plus bonus and two more years salary plus bonus? Also, WDB and Associates provided your health insurance coverage until I find a new job. I glanced toward the magistrate to get guidance. I didn't want to lie, but I wasn't sure what to say. I assured Larry that I wouldn't talk about our sex or reveal it to his spouse. Sitting directly behind Larry was his wife. I'd put my signature on the contract. I told the judge that it was severance pay, even though that wasn't quite accurate. However, the form that Larry had me sign did have the term severance agreement at the top. I guess I wasn't lying after all. I started crying when Mr. Williams took a hostile tone with me. We would like to treat this Mrs. Campbell as a hostile witness, stated Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams remarked the court, she is your witness. How can she be a hostile witness? Didn't you talk to her and prepare her testimony? Your Honor, Jonathan Campbell is Mrs. Campbell's brother-in-law. We tried to talk to Mrs. Campbell, but she would not answer our questions. She would not say a word until she saw her attorney. Mr. Campbell appeared on behalf of Mrs. Campbell. Consequently, she will speak to us now that we have given her the chance to do so, since she refused to speak to us when we offered her the chance. In addition, Mr. Campbell attempted to work out an arrangement with the U.S. attorney to keep Mrs. Campbell out of jail in exchange for her testimony. We turned down his request. Mrs. Campbell will be indicted along with Larry Wilson, Brian Donnelly, and Keith Brown, WDB and Associates if evidence of her involvement is discovered. I asked the judge if I could have a glass of water and if it would be okay if I took my medication, fluoxetine, for my depression and anxiety, which I desperately needed at this point. The judge said I couldn't take any medication without the court hearing from my doctor that it was a necessity, and my health would be at risk if not taken. I was so nervous that I cried and told the judge that I was pregnant and was due very soon. Jonathan asked them to wait until after the babies were born before they questioned me. I never heard from them again until I received a subpoena. The court then requested Mrs. Williams to go on. I guess it was okay for him to scream at me and intimidate me now that I was a hostile witness. Your Honor, thank you. You claim Mrs. Campbell that the money you were given was severance pay. However, a terminated employee only receives six months' worth of severance money at COBRA for healthcare, under WDB and Associates company policy. Furthermore, within three months of termination, a former employee's retirement funds must be rolled over into another eligible plan, otherwise, they become wages and are subject to applicable taxes. Your Honor, after reviewing the documents of WDB and Associates, we have found that no former employee has ever received a severance payment that deviates from the standard operating procedure of the business. I ask you again, Mrs. Campbell, was this money given to you in exchange for your consent to openly lie to the court while seated here? Keep in mind that you are sworn in. I object. Go ahead, Mr. Campbell, I knew you would. Mrs. Mr. Williams' question has previously been addressed by Campbell. She claimed it was part of her severance pay. How many more times can Mr. Williams question the witness without being allowed to? Is the prosecutor okay with us calling it a parting present, farewell package, or something like that? Mr. That should be sufficient, Campbell. 
Do you have any more questions for Mrs. Campbell, Mr. Williams, or will we continue to talk about the severance compensation this afternoon? Your Honor, we suspect that Mrs. Campbell received this money as a bribe to conceal the criminal activities, drug use, prostitution, and extortion of WDB and Associates. We think Mrs. Campbell might also be involved. As the trial goes on, it will remain to be seen how involved Mrs. Campbell was. I informed the judge at this point that I had no idea what Mr. Williams was talking about. I also told him that I felt like I was on trial because I had been called to testify. Mrs. Campbell is obviously in contempt, Your Honor, and the court ought to intervene. Mr. Williams was really disliked by me. I object. Although Jonathan seemed like my personal knight in shining armor, I sensed he was up to something else. Yes, Mr. Campbell. Mr. Williams is intimidating the witness with his intimidating methods in an attempt to get her to alter her evidence. We should proceed now that she has addressed the question. Mr. Campbell, I'm inclined to agree with Mr. Williams. He does have merit to his argument. The payment that Mrs. Campbell received is not consistent with the company policy. I would like to dive into this further before I make my decision, but I will say that right now I am leaning toward allowing the case to go to trial. Mrs. Campbell, you do understand that if you are lying, you may end up go to jail until you decide to answer the question. But your honor, I said quietly, I can't discuss this severance agreement in public. What are you talking about? Before I respond to any further inquiries, I need to speak with my attorney. Who is your lawyer? Jonathan Campbell. This is the most confusing hearing I have ever held. Mr. Campbell cannot be your attorney. It is a conflict of interest since you are a witness for the prosecutor. Your honor, Mr. Campbell is my attorney. He is also representing me as we are suing the FBI. What? Mr. Campbell, you cannot sue the Federal Bureau of Investigation for bringing someone in for questioning. Then Jonathan intervened. Well, it's a little more complicated than that, Your Honor, incarceration, forced dehydration and disallowment of urination. But that has no bearing on today's hearing. You're right it doesn't, Mr. Campbell. And is disallowment even a word? Mr. Campbell, can you enlighten us on the agreement that Mrs. Campbell is referring to and why she can't discuss it? I apologize, Your Honor, but before Mrs. Campbell hired me to represent her, the agreement was signed. I so propose that we take a break so that I can speak with my customer. Following that, Mr. William became quite irate and exclaimed, Your Honor, this is ridiculous. They are toying with us instead of answering our questions. Mrs. Campbell, yes, Your Honor. Can you tell us anything about this contract? Because I understand that you are not a lawyer, but I can assure you that there is no contract that will prohibit you from providing testimony in a federal court hearing. I understand, Your Honor, but I would feel much more comfortable if I could speak to Jonathan. Mr. Campbell, do you have any further questions for Mrs. Campbell besides the severance payment? Yes, we would like to question her regarding her involvement with the so-called golf outings that she organized through Tea Time. I glanced at the judge and replied, Your Honor, I'm very confused. I call Tea Time with the name of attendees, date, and time they will arrive and depart. Tea Time made all the arrangements. The hotel accommodation, dinners, they contact the local golf courses and set the tea times. Oh, and I authorized payment based on the invoice issued. Mr. Williams, what more questions do you have for Mrs. Campbell? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Mrs. Campbell, there is no business called Tea Time. There has never been a tax return filed under the name Tea Time. Can you explain this to me? I object. Ah, Mr. Campbell. If you hadn't objected, I would have had the bailiff check on you to see if you were okay. Tell us your objection, please. Your Honor, I don't know where to start with this one. How does Mr. Williams think Mrs. Campbell would know why Tea Time has not filed a tax return? Is Mrs. Campbell their bookkeeper, accountant, or lawyer? Or Your Honor, how would Mrs. Campbell know if Tea Time forgot to answer that question are you ready to file your federal tax return but when TurboTax Online asked the question? Mr. Campbell, enough. I am not going to tolerate either of you any longer. If this continues, you will be sharing a cell together for a few nights. Your Honor. Yes, Mrs. Campbell. I will give Mr. Williams Chloe Lynn's number if he doesn't already have it. Mr. Williams, I'm almost afraid to ask this question, but have you spoken with Mrs. Lynn? No, Your Honor, we have not. Why not? Your Honor, we don't think Tea Time is a legitimate company. We believe it is an escort service. The only documents that CDW has from Tea Time are invoices going back as far as eight years. The invoice has a PO box as an address and wire transfer details. Mr. Williams, did you ask Mrs. Campbell if she had the number for Tea Time since she seems to be the only one with any involvement with Tea Time? No, Your Honor, Mrs. Campbell would not answer our questions. Your Honor, yes, Mr. Campbell. I informed the FBI agents that if they had any questions for Mrs. Campbell, they should ask them through me. I was never contacted by the FBI agents or the U.S. Attorney's Office again. Thank you for that clarification, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, do you have another witness besides Mrs. Campbell? Yes, Your Honor, we have Mr. Ryan, who is the CFO of Ryan and Brown Publishing. Mr. Ryan has attended the WDB and Associates golf outings for the past eight years. He will testify to the activities that took place at these events. Your Honor, if I may, go ahead, Mr. Campbell. Your Honor, it is our understanding, 
and Mrs. Campbell can attest to this as well, that there are 11 other clients that attend the gold outing along with the owners of WDB and Associates. All the attendees are respected businessmen and well-respected in their communities. Each one of them has equivocally denied all of Mr. Ryan's claims. Mr. Williams, is this correct? Yes, Your Honor, but why would they admit to anything? They would lose their position at their companies they work for, potentially face divorce and humiliation in their communities. I eventually began to find this trial to be interesting. I was unsure of WDB's guilt or innocence. Even though I don't like Mr. Williams, he did make some insightful remarks. Other than his belief that I was involved and knew more than I disclosed to the judge. Mr. Williams, now that Mrs. Campbell is offering to give you the number for Mrs. Lynn, do you think you can have someone track her down and see if the business is a legitimate business? I understand that this could lead to additional information, but we must continue this hearing and you can present your findings later this week. I still have concerns that need to be addressed, therefore in the interim, I would want to speak privately with Mr. and Mrs. Campbell about this agreement. Furthermore, even though this is a preliminary hearing, it is still a hearing and not a free discussion. I have been extremely patient and tolerant, but I can only take so much. Am I understood? Yes, Your Honor, Mr. Williams and Jonathan said. Mrs. Campbell, please turn on your phone and give Mr. Williams the phone number for Mrs. Lynn. We are going to take recess. Please return to the courtroom at 2. Even though I was nervous now, I was relieved that Jonathan was with me. Even though he might despise me for what I did to Tommy, I'm relieved that he now loves me. As we entered the judge's chamber after walking down the hall, he asked if we would want water, tea, or coffee. To help me relax, I had a cup of tea, and Jonathan simply had a bottle of water. After we took our seats, the judge began to speak. Please explain to Mrs. Williams that a contract between herself and WDB and Associates is not worth a hill of beans in my court. Mr. Campbell, please inform your client, I use that term loosely, that she must answer Mr. Williams' questions concerning the generous sum she received because of her termination. I questioned Jonathan, what should I do? As I cast him a glance, Karen, you need to tell the judge what the payment was for. Larry knew this may come out during the hearing. I did my best to suppress it, but Mr. Williams just won't let it go. I the best I could to stop it. Stop what from coming out during the hearing. After that, I started crying and told him the tale. Your Honor, I was drunk one night at our office after hours party and so was Larry. Larry and I had a fair. My husband found out and kicked me out of our house. Larry had me sign an agreement stating that I would not say anything that would result in Larry's wife finding out that we had a fair. Oh, this just keeps getting better and better. I noticed the judge's unhappy expression and began to cry a little. My two tiny daughters and what would happen if I ended up in jail consumed my thoughts as my life fell apart. There would be no mother or father for my children. Mrs. Campbell, I do understand your dilemma, but you will have to tell Mr. Williams. He has the right to ask his questions, as does Mr. Campbell, so that I can make my decision whether to move forward with a trial based on the evidence presented. Mr. Campbell, is there anything you would like to add? May I speak to Larry first and give him a chance to tell his wife before she hears at the courtroom? Yes, that's okay with me. Mrs. Campbell, how about you grab something to eat and we meet back in the courtroom at 2 to finish your testimony? For the record, I am sorry and I hope things work out for you and your husband, Mrs. Campbell. I see why you didn't want to talk about the payment, as I stated in court, but this case is so rare and I have been very lenient as we all strive to get the truth. After expressing my gratitude to the judge, I asked Jonathan if he would also inform Tommy because I didn't want him to be caught off guard. This case had been covered by the media and I knew the local press would cover it extensively. But once it comes out in trial that I had an affair with Larry, everyone will know that I cheated on Tommy, and I imagine that Tommy will force me to sign the divorce agreement, ending what was once a happy marriage. Up until this point, Tommy had still asked for the results of the DNA test and had not pushed me to sign the divorce agreement. After leaving the judge's chambers, I went to a nearby supper with my sister, who was waiting for me. We spoke about this whole disaster of a trial, and she asked me what I thought would happen next. I told her I was being divorced very soon. Karen, what's going on? I have to confess to the prosecutor that I had an affair with Larry and that I was paid to keep it a secret, especially from his wife. Tommy will die if this is discovered by the local media. To prevent him from being taken by surprise, Jonathan will inform him. Oh, Karen, I'm so sorry. Silently, we made our way back to the courthouse and went inside to wait for the judge. The judge asked me to go back to the stand as soon as she entered the room and told everyone to be seated. Mrs. Are you ready to go on, Campbell? As we talked about, you have to respond to Mr. Williams' inquiries, no matter how challenging this may be for you. I looked around the courtroom, thanking God that Tommy wasn't there, but Stephanie, Larry's wife, was, and at least she was still sitting with Larry and not hunting for a divorce attorney, so I told the judge I understood. Mrs. Campbell, please respond to my query right away. Yes, Mr. Williams, I will. After giving me a quick glance, the judge said, go ahead, Karen. WDB hosts a monthly office party at one of the office parties. I had a little too much to drink while also taking medication for a cold, which contributed to my drunken behavior, I said, taking a deep breath before starting. 
As the celebration was coming to a conclusion, I lingered behind and somehow found myself in Larry's office, where we had an affair. The judge requested everyone to calm down so that I could finish, and as you can guess, the courtroom erupted, there was conversation, and the courtroom was in shock. The press was on their phones. I don't think Larry was intoxicated at all, but I wanted to help him at least keep his marriage. Larry is highly professional, and we are both married. Did I ever expect something like this would happen? No. My soon-to-be ex-husband Tommy signed an agreement promising not to discuss the matter in public or tell Larry's wife, and he received a settlement from WBD. A few weeks later, Tommy sued WDB, citing the company's strict non-fraternization policy. Larry was a partner and had an affair, which caused the separation. I was let go shortly after, and I signed a similar contract called a severance agreement, which allowed me to keep my health insurance until I found a new work, as well as my remaining income for the year plus bonus and two further years salary and bonus at my option. For the first time since the hearing started, Mr. Williams was quiet as well as the courtroom fell silent. I was starting to understand it. The prosecutor's entire case rested on my surrender and admitting to the judge that I was aware of every detail of the golf outings, and the cash I got was a reward. Having discovered the reason behind my money transfer, all he had left was Mr. Ryan's allegation of extortion. All eleven of the other clients who went on the gold outing refuted Mr. Ryan's allegations, nevertheless. But Mr. Williams was not going to give up. Your Honor, yes Mr. Williams, this is information that we were not made aware of at Discovery. Mr. Williams, this is a preliminary hearing. Not all information is made available by either side. But Your Honor, what proof is there that this is true? I object. I thought you would Mr. Campbell. Mrs. Campbell has explained what took place and that WDB gave a settlement to both Mrs. Campbell and Mr. Tommy Campbell, her husband. Surely this is enough to put this issue of a payoff to rest. The payoff was to save Larry's wife from finding out of his adultery and potential divorce I might add. Mr. Williams has dragged this out long enough. It is a personal matter and should never have been of any interest to this hearing. Further, Mr. Williams has caused damage to my client, his family, and his reputation. I feel that I should tell the court that I am appalled and will recommend that my client sue for damages to his reputation. Mr. Williams added, Your Honor, this could have been an elaborate scheme. Your Honor, Tommy Campbell, who is my brother, has filed for divorce based on his wife's infidelity. I can attest that this is true as I represented my brother and filed his divorce agreement on the grounds of infidelity. Let me get this straight Mr. Campbell. You represented Mr. Campbell, your brother, with his pending divorce. You represented your brother with his settlement against WDB. You represented Mrs. Campbell when she was questioned by the FBI and recommended that she not speak until suspended. You are representing Mr. Williams in her ridiculous lawsuit against the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And now you are representing WDB. Am I missing anything? Well, Your Honor, I may be representing a Larry Wilson in his lawsuit against Mr. Williams for the damage that he has caused today. That remark made everyone in the courtroom, including the judge, laugh. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Williams. Your Honor, this is all hearsay. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mrs. Campbell. Jose, the office cleaner saw our affair. Jose's brother works for Tommy and that's how Tommy found out I had affair with Larry. Mrs. Campbell, did you think of offering this story to Lifetime TV? My wife loves those programs. I'm sorry that was inappropriate of me. Mr. Williams, are you able to locate this Jose and validate Mrs. Campbell's account? Yes, we will. We'll issue him a subpoena to appear if we have his address. Jonathan stated, Your Honor, Jose is out of the country. He is, of course. The defense is merely engaged in one more game. Permit me to clarify, Your Honor. Oh yes, Mr. Campbell, please do. Puerto Rico is home to Jose. A few months out of the year, he comes to visit his brother, works while he's here, and then heads back to Puerto Rico. He will return, so I've been assured, in around six months. I'm sure the prosecutor will make it back for the hearing if he wants to cover his airfare. This is not a joke, Your Honor. When this hearing is done, we will arrest Mrs. Campbell for co-conspiracy with WDB. I was crying uncontrollably and the judge was trying to comfort me, but I eventually calmed down and requested if we could speak in his chambers once more. The judge had to intervene to stop the outburst by the courtroom. The meeting is over for the day. We are going to meet Friday morning at 10 in this courtroom. Please follow me to my chambers, Mr. Williams, Mr. Campbell, and Mrs. Campbell. We took seats in his office, and I started talking first. Mr. Williams, I was not involved in any unlawful activity that occurred at WDB. I've only ever messed up my marriage. Mrs. You say things that I don't believe, Campbell. Will you stop threatening to jail me if I can show you that I am telling the truth? My two daughters at home are in need of a mother. Given that Jose is conveniently absent, what evidence can you provide? Mr. Williams, please. I am single with two kids. I want to avoid going to jail. I'll respond to all of your inquiries, but the reason I received paid from WDB was only because Larry and I had an affair that evening. Then prove it. Jonathan, please tell Tommy that I love him and that I sincerely apologize for what I did, I said, glancing at him. If that's what he wants, I'll sign the divorce decree and stop fighting with him. 
Mrs. The Court remarked, Campbell, we are not here to discuss your divorce settlement. I was sobbing. The father of my two children Sarah and Becky is Larry Wilson. Mrs. Campbell, do you have any proof of this? The judge questioned me. Yes, I kept it a secret from my husband in the hopes that he would back out of the divorce when he realized my girls were identical to me and that no one would ever find out who the father was. Nevertheless, my spouse persisted in his demand for DNA evidence. I continued to put him off. However, I knew all along, I just couldn't let Tommy go. Soon after the girls were born, I met with Larry and told him I needed to find out if Tommy was the father or not. I thus asked Larry if it would be possible to obtain a sample from him for a DNA test. He assured me he would pay for the girl's college whether he was the father or not. Karen, I will set up a college fund for both of your daughters. He agreed, but he did not want to know if he was the father or not. I don't care if they are my kids, I've hurt them enough already. I married and had a family of my own, therefore I can't. We met at the hospital, the doctor got what he needed from Larry, and Larry left. As promised, he set up a college fund for my kids, and I never told Larry about Tommy. The test results confirmed that Larry was their father. In an attempt to decide what to do next, everyone just sat back in their chairs and stared at one another. Then Jonathan started talking. So, there you have it, evidence that Larry had an affair with Karen, an explanation for the payment, and a justification to tell Larry's wife in the middle of a court proceeding that he had two kids from a single drunken night. We just want to agree that there is no more talk of a payoff for children. Can we agree to this? Your Honor, my client can care less if the prosecutor wants to continue with this ridiculous trial or just drop it for lack of evidence. WDB is innocent and they will come out as a winner and their reputation will not be harmed either way. Would you like to proceed with the preliminary hearing, Mr. Williams, and call his next witness on Friday? Regarding Mr. Campbell's request, I don't see any reason why the money Mrs. Campbell and her husband received should be brought up again because they have no bearing on the outcome of the trial. If everyone agrees, Mrs. Campbell, please provide the DNA proof to me Friday morning before we resume the hearing. I believe there has been enough humiliation. I was crying as I left the judge's office, my head bowed. I believe Tommy was waiting for Jonathan when I saw him in the corridor. I didn't stop to talk to him or even glance at him, I just kept moving forward. Lisa and I drove home once I caught up to her. So, please don't repeat what I am about to tell you. There are only a few people that know, I said to Lisa once we got in the car. Well don't hold me in suspense, what? Sarah and Becky's father is Larry and I need to show the judge and prosecutor the DNA results Friday morning. Once they see the DNA results, the payment will be dropped, and Mr. Williams will also stop threatening to send me to jail. Oh my god Karen how long have you known that the girls were Larry's? I had Larry's do a DNA evaluate a few weeks after the girls were born. Karen don't cry, I'll tell Jerry that I'll be staying with you for a few days. Just me, you mom and dad and the girls. I just need to swing by the house and pack a bag. Let's get some ice cream on the way to your place too. Ice cream is not the answer to everything. No, it's not, but I don't want you getting drunk. So, you're going to eat ice cream. I met with Jonathan and Mr. Williams in the judge's chambers on Friday morning and I showed them the DNA evidence proving Sarah and Becky were Larry's children. No more discussion of the severance agreement, what the payment was for, or the affair between Mrs. Campbell and Mr. Wilson. Am I right? That is between Mrs. Campbell and Mr. Wilson, the judge remarked, glancing at the three of us. At 10, the hearing will start. Mrs. Campbell, you can stay in the courtroom and watch the rest of the performance, or I can call you back to the stand and ask if Mr. Williams and Mr. Campbell have any more questions. Hi Dad, you want a piece of birthday cake and coffee? No, I just came to see my granddaughters before I go to bed. Okay, Mom went to bed a while ago. I'll see you in the morning for breakfast. Good night, love you. I love you too. Hey girl, what are you doing? I was just thinking about when the kids were born and the crazy trial. Did you and Dad get all the girls' toys put together? I apologize to Karen, I shouldn't have said that, but we could have utilized Tommy to build that girl's house. The instructions were like blueprints. Roger, I'm over him. I was aware that if Tommy discovered that I had an affair with Larry, he would not forgive me. In any case, he would only accept the girls if they were his. I am now entirely yours. Are you going to stay tonight or go back to your place? Well, your parents are going to be in the room right next to us. Just because you're sleeping over doesn't mean we have to sleep together. For what duration are they here? Roger inquired. Two weeks. Is it not possible for them to spend a few nights at your sister's home and see her children? You are unbelievable. Two weeks cannot pass without anything. I don't want to go two minutes without sleeping with you. I'll give you something in the morning if you can survive the night, I'll tell you that. Yes, Dottie's brother Roger and I fell in love. He was always there to support me while I was crying, and he waited patiently. He simply listened to me and let me come to my own conclusions about Tommy, never offering an opinion. He relocated when he felt I had mourned long enough, and I'm pleased he did. Conclusion Tommy was informed by Jonathan that Larry owned the girls, and I agreed to the terms of the divorce. Jonathan reached an agreement with my divorce lawyer, Laura Crown, on a payment for my portion in the company. 
I informed Laura that if Tommy spoke with me, he could keep the money and I would not accept any for the business. He remained uncommunicative with me. He declared that he would rather buy me out than speak to me ever again. The only Campbell family member that continues to communicate with me is Tina. She was inconsolable by Tommy's decision to end their five years of marriage over such a terrible error. Using drugs and alcohol was a major mistake. Chloe Lynn contacted the prosecutor's team and provided them with a list of other clients who attested to the legitimacy of the organization and services rendered. According to the prosecutor, T-Time's federal tax returns were not located. Federal tax audit T-Time was subsequently introduced by the IRS. All the documentation needed to support T-Time and the manner in which tax returns were submitted was supplied by the company's accountant and lawyer. I won't try to explain anything because I don't understand any of it. All I know is that nothing unusual was discovered by the IRS auditor. In any case, the judge decided that there was insufficient evidence to proceed with a trial because the prosecutor only had Mr. Ryan's allegation of extortion, and the other 11 customers who attended the golf trip refuted all of Mr. Ryan's assertions. My comment, despite her manipulations she rightfully ended up divorced. What a move, trying to hide the father of a child and get the husband to raise them? You've seen anything like this around you? Comment down below, sub and bell and I will catch you in the next one.